afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Today, this afternoon, we'll start with the clinical case presentation and discussion in obstetrics and gynecology. This session will be chaired by me and Professor Ete. There will be four speakers in this session, two obstetric cases and two gynae presentations are going to be presented. The first speaker will be Dr. Yen Nai Wu, lecturer from Defense Services Medical Academy. He is going to talk about unlucky lady. We can listen about very sad tragedy of a woman. I would like to call upon Dr. Yen Nai Wu to present your case. Good afternoon, Madam Chair, Persons, ladies and gentlemen. I am Lieutenant Colonel Jian Aiyu, lecturer from Obstetric and Gynecological Department of Defense Services Medical Academy. May I present a case? She she Sorry, may I present my case? Captain E. Uh, Captain EMA, 29 years, gravita 2, gravity 0 plus 1, residing at Bobby, was admitted to number one defense services, obstetric gynecological and children's hospital on 5th January 2021, 2 p.m. With chief complaint of severe back pain started on 11 a.m. Uh, with breach presentation at 36 weeks of gestation. Uh, she was a graduate. She had family history of hypertension in her father. Uh, there was no history of smoking, alcohol, to, to alcohol drinking, and bitter chewing. Her past medical, surgical, and drug history were not relevant. Please, like please. She used combined oral contraceptive pills for one year. On her past obstetric history, she married with an officer for three years. Her past pregnancy was spontaneously miscarried at one and a half months of gestation in November 2018. There was no dilatation and curatage. On reviewing her history of present pregnancy, uh, it was planned pregnancy. Uh, according to her last menstrual date, her majority by date on admission was 35 weeks and one day. It was coincide with uh, early scan on six week. Uh, she had history of hospitalization for threatened miscarriage and eight weeks of gestation. Uh, th there was also a history of tonsillitis in her first trimester. She took regular antenatal care and an eventful second and third trimesters. Uh, on history of present illness, she suffered severe back pain, uh, started while she was taking bath, uh, associated with discomfort in her upper, upper blood mucus and watery discharge per vagina. Uh, there was also no history of fever, cough, and sneezing. Her urinary and bowel symptoms were normal. Examination on admission revealed uh, she was afebrile. There was no pala, not testnate, 130 over 70 millimeter mercury, pass rate 84 per piece per minute with good SpO2. Her heart and lungs were clinically clear. On obstetric examinations, uh, there was 36 week size uterus with single fetus, longitudinal line, breech presentation, uh, uh, without definite uterine contraction and uterine tenderness. Uh, Fida has was well 
strong and regular. Double R2 ready zero plus one with back chain. We have considered different days, renal cooling and threatened premature labor. Our uh, immediate treatment given where IV line uh, with uh, injection diglofenate, renodidine, maxalone, dexamethasone, madonna, and pindar monitoring. Our back pain was temporary relief, but recur at 4 p.m. and it was associated with vomiting. At 8 p.m., she suffered dyspnea. And at 9 p.m., patient had restless and clammy. Her blood pressure was 100 over 40 millimeter mercury, and she was O2 on air was 96% and on oxygen 99%. Uh, OG, joint care with on call physician, surgeon, and chest physician were seen. Uh, investigations regarding uh, investigations then where uh, ultrasound abdomen revealed single bioma 36 weeks fetus with breech presentation, no features of placenta abruption. Uh, ultrasound chest showed left sided pleural effusion. ECG have sinus tachycardia. Argent chest x ray also showed left sided pleural effusion. Cardiotogography uh, have a reactive pattern without uterine contraction. In the ultrasound record, next slide, please. This x ray plane showing the left sided pleural effusion. Argent blood test results where CPO2 had uh, neutrophil leukocytosis and uh, hemoglobin 9.1 gram percent with normal platelet. COVID-19 RDT test was negative. Next slide, please. Uh, spe specialist opinions were uh, from OG side. There was no feature of obstetric emergency. Uh, opinions from chest physician and surgeon was massive left pleural effusion. On preparation for ultrasound guided diagnostic pleural effusion, patient encountered cardiopulmonary arrest on 11.45 p.m. Cardiopulmonary resuscitation was done for 30 minutes, but unluckily patient was expired on 0030 a.m. 6 January. Uh, our clinical cause of death was circulatory collapse due to, uh, maybe due to pulmonary embolism or rupture aortic aneurysm. Next slide. Our postmodern cause of death were, uh, number one is shock and hemorrhage. Number two, left-sided hemothorax with massive hematoma alongside thoracic aorta and inferior vena cava. Number three is spontaneous rupture of inferior vena cava. Uh, this picture showing the postmodern finding of left sided massive hematoma alongside the thoracic aorta and inferior vena cava. This, this postmodern picture also shows massive hematoma alongside the thoracic aorta and inferior vena cava. This is, uh, this is the picture of thoracic aorta. This is the picture of esophagus, thoracic aorta and inferior vena cava. Uh, to raise awareness of a rare and potentially devastating disease that may present during pregnancy. Yes, we are present a brief literature. Spontaneous rupture of inferior vena cava without prior history of trauma is extremely rare, with only less than five reported cases in the literature. The mortal mortality is 57 to 95 percent as five from resuscitation. Nearly one third of the patient with inferior vena cava injury 
died even before reaching the hospital. A half of those who admitted expired despite prompt resuscitation or early operation. The usual cause of death is massive asynchronization, leading to hypovolemic shock and body organ failure. Patients with polygonous structure of inferior vena cava can present as hemopericardium, the location of rapture. Therefore, the symptoms may vary from acute chest pain, like my patient, to abdominal distension or even shock for your attention. Now the floor is open for questions. Okay. Uh, Dr. Yen, will you consider us about perimortem cesarean section to save the baby's life? Perimortem cesarean section since I'm alive. Perimortem cesarean โอเคไอ้ไฉมาเซตาแก่บาเรมาดาบิเนตมาลุไอ้ไฉมาตู้เยฮัสตันอ่ะบีหน้ามาไม่ใช่แค่อุปนะไอ้ตัวตรงนี
I am Dr. Desingui Han, Central Women Hospital, Yen Gong, and I would like to present a very interesting case of the our hospital. Then my topic is the teenage malignancy. KTZ, 15 years old girl, presented with the irregular bleeding by vagina for two months, and something protruding in the vagina with sense of incomplete maturation for two weeks. Haminaki is at 13 years and regularly menstruated before this clinical presentation and she had no relevant history of bleeding disorder. On examination, generally she looked normal female external appearance. On abdominal examination, there was no palpable mass. On one thing of BE, uterus was about 14 weeks size and soft tissue growth about five into six centimeter protruded through the organs and filled in the vagina kernel. Ultrasound described that the uterus was 12 into 4 cm with a cogenic SOL about 5.2 into 1.9 cm in the endometrial cavity, extending down to the cervical canal. Polypectomy and diagnostic DNC was done on 30th April 2020 by the junior consultant, and the findings show infected cervical polyp about 6 into 4 cm rising from the posterior lip of the surface, and uterus was enlarged about 12 weeks size with thickened endometrium. The biopsy report revealed the inflamed endocervical polyp, weak endometrial hyperplasia, and no features of malignancy. Recurrent episode occurred within one and a half months after first time polypectomy. There was similar clinical finding show the uterus about 14 week size and fleshy endometrial polyp was protruded. Hysteroscopy and polypectomy was done on 24 June 2020 by the same consultant. The findings show surface looked normal, cervical kind of filled with the polyp. Multiple endometrial polyp arising from the lower part of the uterus and very friable. The biopsy was infected endometrial polyp. Third episode occurred two months after second time polypectomy. There are also similar clinical findings about endometrial polyp 4.5 cm. Second time hysteroscopy and polypectomy was done on 4 September 2020. Six centimeter with thickened endometrium. And brown and rhabdomyosarcoma and atypical adenofibroma. IC staining was proceeded to more strongly positive that A1 and A3. So the result people the origin. Because of malignancy in young age and the rare type of this tumor, JCC meeting was done. The patient had screen share the people with you. The pit hog screen share look beba. The cause of malignancy in young age and rare type of this tumor, JCC meeting was done. Patient had another episode of bleeding by vagina again when went later of the last operation and there was regrowing of the tumor. Therefore, surgical management was proceeded after thyroid counseling. Laparotomy was done on 11 November 2020 by the senior gynec oncologist. The operative findings show there was no ascites fluid. The uterus was about 14 weeks size and large polypoidal mass, 6 into 7 cm, rising from the pentas and filled the whole endometrial cavity and down to the endosurface. The atrocervical ring looked normal, both tubes and ovaries were normal, and the, there was no palpable pelvic limb node. This slide shows the post operative finding. TH, PSO, peritoneal watching cytology, and omen biopsy were done. Biopsy revealed that the uterine adenosarcoma situated at the fantas invading the inner half of the myometrium with the lymphovascular space invasion, but low mitotic activity and low sarcometers overgrowth. So it was diagnosed as uterine adenosarcoma stage 1b. Second time, IC staining was proceeded for smooth muscle adding and desmine. Both viruses were negative for the given tissue. It means the mesenchymal origin of the tumor tissue is homologous to the uterus. 
Uh, Post operative period was an even for a refer to medical oncology for the adjuvant chemotherapy. Now she took second cycle of chemotherapy on 15 January 2020, the combination of the iphosphamide and adriamycin. Literature review. This tumor is the combination of the benign epithelial lining and the malignant mesenchymal component. Therefore, this tumor is halfway along the missed Mullerian tumor, adenofibroma at one end and the carcinosarcoma at the other end. The first, firstly, it was described by the Clement and Schooley in 1974. The incident is 5.5 to 9 percent and only situated only 1 percent of the genital tract malignancy. The incident is peak in the 50 to 60 years of age. Clinical features, the most common and common presenting symptom is the abnormal vagina bleeding, about 71%. It can also present as the pelvic mask, uterine polyp, abdominal pain, found smelling, vagina discharge, and the pelvic pressure symptom. Ultrasound scan show the large heterogeneous mass occupying the whole uterine cavity. In MRI, it can be described as a markedly enlarged uterus with thin myometrium due to the occupying of a large polyvital mass. Pathological findings, microscopically, the stroma typically concentrate around the gland, very glandular curving, so it can distinguish from its benign counterpart adenofibroma. Majority of the sarcomatous component is endometrial stroma sarcoma. Then, about one quarter of cases, heterologous mesenchymal can be present. Adenosarcoma is mostly originating from the endometrium, but it can also present from the myometrium and the endosarcoma. This slide shows the periglanular cupping. So it can be considered to be less aggressive and more favorable prognosis than the carcinosarcoma. If the sarcomatous component is at least 25% of the tumor, it can be defined as the adenosarcoma with sarcomatous overgrowth. IC staining, cell proliferation markers of KI67 and P53 are stronger in adenosarcoma with sarcomatous overgrowth. But in typical adenosarcoma, CD10 and progesterone receptor are very higher. Estrogen and progesterone receptor expression were higher in typical adenosarcoma. In this case, there are good prognostic factors, Janish and no limb no limb node involvement and margin clearance and the no sarcomatous overgrowth. But this has poor prognostic factors or myometrial invasion and the lymphovascular space invasion. According to the FICO report 2018, this case was diagnosed as the stage 1B due to the inner half of the myometrial invasion. According to five-year survival and recurrence, for the stage 1, survival rate is 79% and decreasing to 48% for the stage 3. Adenosarcoma with sarcomatous overgrowth has higher mortality and higher rate of recurrence. Regarding surgical treatment, surgery is the main treatment. THBSO is the standard surgical gate. Limb antineatomy is still controversial. Regarding the chemotherapy, the overall survival was only influenced by the surgery and no impact of the chemotherapy, palliative radiotherapy, and the hormonal. Progression-free survival was better for the combination therapy of the dorsorubicin and the adriamycin. Travelating can be used in the relapse cases of the adenosarcoma. Hormonal treatment, high-dose progesterone, methoxyprogesterone, acetate, and metastrol, and the aromatase inhibitors can also be used, especially for the receptor-positive patient. Radiotherapy, then no benefit in overall survival in receptive neutrine adenosarcoma. Therefore, not recommended for the routine use. Those are references, and thank you very much for your attention. Uh, sorry for the problem of sharing the slides at the beginning and uh, we lost our concentration. Actually, it is very interesting case of malignancy in young age. 15 years old presented with the recurrent episode of bleeding and uh, passing of the polyp-like growth. The, there are three histological findings, the last finding found out malignancy. It is the adenosarcoma, isn't it? I, I want to wind up the scenario. And then 
finally, and then she work out to get the diagnosis behind doing the immunohistological uh, chemi chemistry essay and uh, uh, the HPSO and chemotherapy was then. So any questions? I'm welcome. And may I know about the prognosis of uh, your particular patient? Yes, your patient. Um, uh, this patient has good prognostic fragiles because uh, she is youngish and there is or no the sarcometers overgrowth and the limb node involvement and the surgical margin clearance. So surgery is surgery can be uh, surgery is completely in this case. Therefore, those patterns are good prognostic. Adenosarcoma uh, with the sarcometers overgrowth is the aggressive nature. Here, there is no such uh, sarcoma overgrowth. So please explain what is the sarcoma overgrowth, Dr. Oh, Tsimiha. Sarcometers overgrowth globular waters or nasal demisacrima origin, sarcoma component at least 25% by our member. Uh, Adeno sarcoma is the rare sarcoma, Lyomyo sarcoma is the commonest, and endometria stroma sarcoma is the second. So that's why we want to present this rare case. Any questions from the audience? No, no Q. If there is no more sex, no more questions, I will call the third speaker. That speaker is Dr. Lin Wei Kai, specialist assistant surgeon from North Oklahoma General and in Hospital. She's going to present about the obstetrics trauma. May I call upon Dr. Lin Wei Kai? to present about your case. Uh, I'm not sure about the Zoom. 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 Good evening, Madam Chairpersons and other participants. I am Dr. Lin Kai, Special Assistant Surgeon, Obstetrics and Gynecology from University of Medicine II. I would like to present a case of a lady with severe bed-related trauma. She is a 36 years old gravity 2 priority 1 plus 0 lady from Tandemin Township, admitted to our hospital at 3 p.m. on 6 November 2020. She was referred from Plantile Hospital for hypovolemic shock at the second stage of labor with urethral tear and bladder tear and fourth degree perineal tears with attempted home delivery. Her NMP was annual. According to 32 week scan, her maturity was 41 weeks and 5 days. She took antenatal care at MCH for only one time. She got married at the age of 32 years and single married. Her first child was one by spontaneous vaginal delivery at 8 months of gestation at home. Anemia needed that occur at day 2, that annual bed weight. In this pregnancy, the labor pain was started at 9 a.m. on 6 November 2013, the woman and her family chose home delivery by TBA. At about 1 p.m., the perineum was kept by TBA with a sharp blade to deliver the baby. With massive bleeding and failure to deliver the baby, she was admitted to Kandaya Hospital at 2 p.m. on 6 November 2020. 
At Lantaya Hospital, she was in shock with a blood pressure of 65 per patient and pass rate of 120 beat per minute. Abdominal examination revealed a term size, single fetus, longitudinal line baby width, and certain variability. The tiny examination revealed a cervical dilatation of 8 cm with station 0 and like a misfit shoe. There were urethra of bladder tail and 4 degree perineal tears. At Lantara Hospital, initial resuscitation was done and internal catheterization was also done. With blood transfusion, she was referred to Nalkrava General and Region Hospital. On admission at our hospital, she was febrile with fever of 100 degree Fahrenheit with Mark Bella. Blood pressure was 130 by 18 mercury and pass rate of 140 per minute. A dominant examination revealed a tan size, single fetus, longitudinal line baby with absent fetus song. With the head sound. The dining examination revealed a fully dilated surface with station 0 plus 1, and the baby was out in position with a cupboard of 3 into 3 cm with grade 2 molding. Lyca was not obtained. There were blood stained urine of 100 cc in the urine bag. 15 minutes after arrival to our hospital at 3.15 p.m., a female fresh SB 3.3 kg baby was delivered vaginally. The stage of labor was an even four. After delivery of the baby, there were multiple perineal tears, including the anterior vaginal wall tear, together with urethral tear or bladder tears, and there were also four degree perineal tears. Urethra and bladder tear is both in the catheter balloon in the vagina in this figure. With multidisciplinary team approach by obstetrician and gynecologists, general surgeons, neurosurgeons, anesthetists, and physicians, the repair of the injuries were done by three teams and at the combined spinal epidural anesthesia. The operation time was 6 hours and 20 minutes. Surgical team, the finding was 4 degree perineal tear and temporarily sigmoid loop colostomy and in a spindle opposition was done by surgical team. Neurosurgical team also attended the operation. Their findings were as follows. Blood neck was kept from the urethra with a posterior bladder wall injury, including the triangle, which was 4 cm in length. And there were also anterior bladder wall injury, 2 cm in length. Bladder repair with formal superfluid catheterization and minor transistent insertion through the midline abdominal position. This figure shows the bladder repair with formal suprapubic catheter and bilateral distance insertion. In OG10, the findings through the abdominal approach reveal uterus, ovaries, and ovaries were intact. Through the perineal approach, there was a cervical tear about 3 cm and multiple anterior vaginal wall and lateral vaginal wall tears with 4 degree perineal tear of 6 cm. The repair of cervical tear and vaginal wall tears, repair of the retinal mucosa, internal and external inner spindles repair and vaginal mucosa, perineal muscle tears repair were done. These two figures show after repair of the injury. The first figure show temporary loop colostomy and repair of the bladder injury through the abdominal incision. The second figure show after repair of the fourth degree perineal tear. She was transferred whole blood of 4 units, pex of 2 units, and PRV of 1 unit within 48 hours. Parental antibiotics were given and thromboprophylaxis was also given for 10 days. Her postal period was an even full and she was discharged on 12 posts of day. Internal catheter was removed after 3 weeks and superbuvic catheter was removed after 4 weeks. The colostomy closure is planned on 25th January 2021. No urinary and fecal incontinence occur at two months follow up. Implantal insertion was then for family planning. Literature review. But related perineal trauma has many risk factors, as we all know, like maternal age, low priority, instrumental deliveries, and birth weight of more than 4 kg and prolonged second stage of labor. Inadequate management of this injury can cause severe complication. For acute complication, it can cause hemorrhage and puberous sepsis. For chronic complication, perfect flow disorders such as urinary and fecal incontinence, persistent pain like dyspareunia and prolapse can occur. 
Birth related perineal trauma is also likely to be increased in Puara setting because of limited access to the adequate resources such as optimal suturian materials and poor environmental and household circumstances and lack of sanitation and malnutrition. Approximately 1.3 million women gave birth each year in Myanmar. Home delivery was 64% and institutional delivery was only 36%. At rural areas, 90% of deliveries they occur at home. 50% are attended by TBEs. These traditional birth attendants were the most common delivery assistants in the private sector. In this case, the TBE is NK and lack of the training. The woman and family member choose home delivery because of the social reasons. Financial difficulties and transportation-related barriers were not found in this case. A hospital-based cross-sectional descriptive study at our hospital in 2018, the most common reasons for attempted home deliveries are look at viability and familiarity in 26.3%, followed by financial problem in 22.8%. The mode of delivery in this study show 47% are borne by emergency LSCS and 34% by normal delivery and 18% by instrumental deliveries. For the perinatal outcomes, 3.6% of attempted home delivery are stable and 3.8% of her early neonatal death. The reported incidence of obstetric associated blender injury is rare and it is between 0.14% and 0.94%. The overall prognosis depends on other injuries. But when the baby flow is injury like in our cases, it some patients may develop urinary incontinence in their life. Overall, incidence of the obstetric inner spindle injuries occur in 6.1% in primary para compared with 1.7% in multi para. 60 to 80% of women are asymptomatic at 12 months following delivery and rebate. The severe anatomical disruption of red and mucosa seen in this patient warranted a temporary loop colostomy to protect the repair. She was managed by a multidisciplinary team, including urologist, surgeon, and gynecologist. Physiotherapy and psychological support were also provided. In conclusion, among the highest worldwide maternal mortality ratio, the majority of mortality and morbidity were being associated with a lack of trained supervision at delivery. Because of the home delivery by NSK person, maternal morbidities like vaginal prolapse or puberal psychosis can cause unwanted physical, mental, social, and economic consequences for respective families. Severe perineal trauma is a preventable in some extent, but an unfortunate outcome of vaginal delivery. Both obstetric anus mental injuries and leisure injury can be reduced by improving practice, training, and provision of high quality care in order to reduce the long term morbidity. And these are my references. And thank you for your attention. Uh, thank you, Dr. Liming Kai. Tikis Limali, Daro, Nemari Maro, no, the Batro Mariha, no, home delivery, Miare, the Jamulu, not Pini Amava. Tikis Lima to home delivery, no, attempt no Gretchy Mano, vagina manipulation in Loka the La, no, Lanta Yau Gretchy Mao, no, vaginally, no, Muibu, try Loka the La, but don't let's all Tikis Kadaro, Yau Glau, Yau Bibijam, Blama Mijau, or Muidwarali, at a Jamulu. The vagina manipulation, attempted home delivery, ma, no, look at the history. Okay, Shema. Do I know my case car of or not? Do I mean, I นะกูน่ะมาไปซาหนาไปแล้วเส้นหนาไปแล้วเท่าซาไปแล้วดีกว่าทีวีเอเนี่ยอะแทมลบมาเอามาซีย่าหรอเลยตัวเราไม่เห
ကိစ်မှာဆိုလို့ရှင်တော့လောင်းတမ်းကတော့သူ့ရဲ့ဒီဘလက်ဒါအင်ဂျူရီနဲ့ဒီရီတရာအင်ဂျူရီတွေကတ
jubilancy. We can do the jubil test the jubilancy during hysteroscopy. If the bubbles, the air bubbles growing inside the jubil ostia, the jubil is open. I prefer to use inject the air bubble with the butterfly needle from the side tube. If the tube is blocked, we then proceed to the tube cannulation uh, with, to, together with the laparoscopy and chromopacubation. This is a good catheter. For the good catheter, they, it has the outer catheter and inner catheter. So we firstly insert the outer catheter first, then advance the inner catheter with the guide wire, then remove the guide wire and inject the line into through the inner catheter. Then we check with the laparoscopy. This is the mark position of the IUCD because if we find the same, only part of the IUCD is seen, we should consider the laparoscopy because we have three cases in which the IOCD was inside, part of the IOCD was inside the small bowel, and one cases the IOCD was inside the serosa of the bladder. Luckily, three of the four cases were, can be managed with laparoscopy. Okay. This is a, a multiple IOCD fragments. Uh, sometimes the, the, the IOCD maybe have a multiple fragment if it is inserted a long time ago. ago. So if, in the difficult cases, we can use the optical, optical grasp bar that urosurgeon use for uh, urethric catheter removal. In this cases, the patient complained with the, presenting with the recurrent miscarriage. Uh, the, in, in, during the hysteroscopy, we found the intrauterine septum. So if the septum is small, we can simply cut with the scissor but if the septum is large, uh, we prefer to do the septal recession with the basal point, which is a bipolar lateral. This is our after uh, excisions of the uterine septum. So as a post-operative management, we prefer to give the inside the IOCD, uh, copper IOT, IOCD, uh, after removing the copper from the uh, IOD uh, to prevent the addition. This is the uterus didephus. This patient have a two vagina, two cervix, and two uterine fetus. These are the intrauterine addition from the previous infections. This is also the severe endometritis. There are, you can see that there are uh, hemorrhagic area occupying the all, all over the uterus. This is a chronic endometritis. In this case, the chronic endometritis is the emerging causes of the recurrent miscarriage and recurrent implantation failure. We can also inject the methylene blue during the hysteroscopy, and uh, this, this lesion will be stained with the methylene blue. If you took the biopsy from this area and sent for histopathological examination, you may see that the plasma cell infiltration into the endometrium. This is the atrophic endometritis. Yeah, you can see that the endometrium is thin and atrophic, and you can also see the small capillary yeah, with uh, unsupported tissues. So usually the bleeding is from the disc capillary. So when we reduce the breath, 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 intrauterine pressure, uh, the, sometimes the bleeding from the, the capillary can be seen. This is the endometrial polyp and myometrial polyp. For the endometrial polyp, we prefer to do small polyp, we prefer to do at the outpatient hysteroscopy. For myometrial polyp, uh, we prefer to do the hysteroscopy recession and our spinal anesthesia. This is the endometrial polyp. Sm for the small polyp, we can simply cut with the scissor or sometimes you can um, pull with the crest bar. You, you can see there is a no bleeding. For a larger stock, uh, we prefer to use the bipolar electrode from basal point. And if there is a multiple endometrial polyp, we should be beware of the atypia. Because uh, so we, we need to take the biopsy not only from the polyp, but also from the remaining endometrium to exclude the coexisting 
endometrial cancer. This is a basa point system we use for hysteroscopy recession. This is a transvicular recessions of the myoma. Uh, for the transvicular recession of the myoma, usually start with the same cases like type zero, which is the myoma is completely intracavitary or type one, more than 50% in the uh, endometrium. And, and uh, so endometrial cavity. So <clears throat> we can start with the symbol one. So it, uh, to reduce the bleeding, we can inject the intracervical vasopressin or telepressin. So sometimes in, sometime the, uh, the mass is so big, so you can consider the two-step operation because when you take the operation for the long time, there is a risk of pulmonary edema. For the take home message, the hysteroscopy is simple and effective way to diagnose and treat the intrauterine pathology. So you just start with the simple cases and then proceed to the advanced cases. So advice from the experienced person is usually helpful. Thank you for your attention. Thank you very much, Dr. Wei Ma, for your comprehensive presentation and colorful picture and video. So if you want audience, if you want to ask the questions, please write the questions through the chat box. Your presentation is so clear. There is no. What about you? What about you? I will. I would like to so ask one question. What about your complications rate, and which complications have you encountered so far? Uh, actually, uh, I'm, uh, for my cases, uh, the cases I have been performed, and uh, there is uh, very few minor complications. Uh, like the uh, post-operative fever uh, for maybe one or two days, uh, that's all. But uh, for the junior, that uh, they are in, in, in experienced person, uh, they, I think um, they, we, they got a uh, uterine operation for maybe two cases and last two years. For office hysteroscopy, um, how long uh, do you keep the patients after the procedure? How many hours? Uh, no, uh, for the office hysteroscopy, I usually keep uh, for only half or, uh, half an hour to one hour. Yes. Uh, because uh, they are usually mobile. So after the procedure, they can wait outside and yes. uh, after one hour, they can go home. Uh, usually they are the OBD cases and uh, they usually, uh, the consultant from the Ghani OBD, they slot the cases uh, and send to the, our outpatient hysteroscopy clinic. Okay. Have you encountered IUCD uh, inserted in China? So no um, tail, but only yes. ring? Quad. Yes, uh, they, they have uh, only two kinds yes. uh, in China. Uh, one is a circular IUCD. Yeah. Circular IUCD. Uh, well, circular IUCD with the copper around it. So uh, it's sometimes uh, I use a hook, hook to to hook the uh, ring and and remove it. So when, uh, it's a uh, one of the easy way to remove. Or maybe you can grasp the grasper. Sometimes uh, if you, if you don't have a hysteroscopy, uh, we can insert a small a small hook inside the uterine cavity and can remove it. Yeah. yeah. So another one is, uh, I think, maybe over shape or uh, you try you try shape IOD from yeah. the uh, from the China. Yeah. So I, I think um, the the more one of the easier thing to remove is this that because it, they they are the complete cycle. So yeah. or some you can hook the IOD and you can put it out. Okay. If there are no more questions, I want to conclude this clinical section. Uh, first of all, I'd like to wind up the, uh, all the four presentations. The first speaker, 
talk about the unlucky lady. That is the very rare cases of spontaneous rupture of inferior vena cava. And uh, that is quite interesting, but unfortunately we cannot see the slides clearly. So we lost our concentrations. The second speaker focused on the oncology aspect. That is the uterine adenosarcoma in young age. Third speaker uh, focused on the safe motherhood issue. That is the reproductive health issue. We can the how importance of the skilled birth attendants. And uh, if uh, we need to reduce the mother morbidity and mortality, we need to train the, all the birth attendants to be skilled for. The last speaker is specialized in endoscopy and histologic, hysteroscopic uh, treatment and investigations. And we can get the diagnosis as well as therapeutic as well. So I would like to congratulate all four speakers and uh, who present all the presentation in within the time limit. And I also thankful to all participants who discussed the presentation. Thank you very much.